I'm trying to film my introduction to this week's vlog. However, there's something that I have to get off my chest. Ladies and gentlemen, down here where you can see all this black and a, you know, a little tiny bit of water there. This is an English reservoir called Kinder Reservoir. Look how dry it is. There's like, there's barely any water in it. I don't even know if you could swim in that. That's mental. It's like way less than half full. Anyway, that's completely off topic. It's just a little bit scary. And proof to anyone that's not from the UK how much of a dry summer we've had. Crazy. Now, if you haven't guessed, we're in the Peak District again. I love this place. It's incredible. I love it. And it's so underrated in my opinion. It's such an awesome part of England. I love it. Um, we're going to do a wild camp, hence the large bag. And we're going to camp right up there. Right in the top left of your screen, there should be a little waterfall. There's not a chance you'll be able to see it on your screen. However, that is called Kinder Scout Plateau. And yeah, we're going to spend the night. <clears throat> Just quickly, I'm going to split the video into two for the wild camp. I did an awesome, um, we had an awesome adventure a couple of weeks going to Snowdonia, which was also a wild camp. I'll link it up here. However, the video was just a little bit too long for my liking. It was like over 20 minutes. I had to cut out a lot of footage because I didn't want it to be even longer than that. So yeah, in this week's video, we're just going to do, you know, the hike up and then hopefully a really nice sunset at the top. Hope that's all right with you guys and my audience. Now, a little bit of a topic this week. I've bought a new lens, a Nikon 55 to 200 f4 to f5.6. I'm well happy. This is a cheap lens. I got it for even cheaper than what it should have been. It was 40 quid off bloody Facebook marketplace. How cheap is that? <clears throat> um, yeah, so like I say, it ain't the best lens in the world, but it is going to do the job more than well enough. Um, and in this week's video, I really want to try and explain to us landscape photographers why you should invest in a telephoto lens. The wide angle lens is synonymous, 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 synonymous with landscape photography and for good reason. I love my wide angle lens. I've got a Tokina 11-16 f2.8. It's probably always going to be my favorite lens. However, I want to explain to you in this week's video why I have invested in this lens. So, let's go and explore. Right, a little bit of a history lesson for you this week. Something pretty interesting occurred here a few years ago. I thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, I say a few years ago, it was about 80 years ago. So in the 1930s in England and Wales, a lot of people were not allowed to use these lands or it was seen as trespassing. So mostly working class people, they couldn't come here, enjoy the great outdoors, go on hikes. Basically what we're doing today. So obviously big shame, big tragedy. Now what happened here at Kinder Scout, this very location, was hundreds of people, mostly working class people, they got together and they committed what was known as a mass trespass on these very lands. And it was, it was a protest basically against the government and against certain authorities to say, you know, look, we want to use these lands for our own pleasure. And these sorts of lands were kind of set aside for, you know, like wealthy people and people that wanted to come hunting and stuff, whatever. But anyway, there was a few scuffles and some people got arrested, but then I think just over a decade later, so quite a while, um, new legislation was brought in, new laws to say that anybody has the right to roam on these sorts of lands, even if they're privately owned, which is obviously fantastic for people like you and I. So yeah, legends really. I don't think they were the sort of direct cause that brought the legislation, but 
they were seen as you know a really big catalyst to get it um, to the forefront or whatever, which is amazing. So, cheers, guys and girls and children, whoever went. Ah, anyway, the photography. I haven't really seen much yet, to be honest. I want to get a little bit higher. And I bet you're looking at the clouds thinking, why have you come out when the weather's crap again, Henry? Why are you doing it? But, and I say but, because I mean, if I had a pound for every time I say this on my videos, I could probably get a better camera or something, or, or a new lens, whatever. But the forecast is meant to be good. I hate saying that now. I honestly do. But yeah, it's, it's supposed to clear up at sunset. So I feel like I'm walking into what's going to be good weather. So, yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, that's my motto. Anyway, you've had your history lesson. Ugh. Let's crack on. We're at the top, we're on the plateau. Now, get a look at this. There is our waterfall. We're stood in the river right now. Crazy, and I thought the, the, the low amount of water in the reservoir was bad, this is crazy. The river up here is completely dried out and there's absolutely no waterfall. I, I've got, you've seen my little water filter that I've been using now and again. I was kind of half relying on that for my water. I'm lucky I've got like two smallish bottles of water for my food and drink my coffee in the morning good god what i have done without that anyway i haven't really been looking for much photography to be honest it's uh, the height was pretty difficult towards the end but anyway we're up here now we're on location so about an hour and 20 minutes till sunset i'm gonna make something to eat i'm starving i've got some curry super noodles to keep me going and then i'm probably just gonna set up the tent quickly and then have a little wander around see what we can find see if we can get get some of the zoom lens it does look like it's clearing up a little bit so keep the fingers crossed as a you know as you know i like to say and yeah super noodles <laughs> Now, time for the main event, the super noodles. Tell you what, I'm a really big fan of super noodles. They've really hit the spot. I was pretty knackered by the time I got up here, but yeah, top draw, especially them curry ones. And they're so light in your bag as well. They're perfect for wild camping. Big fan. Now, as you can see behind me, the weather is crap. Surprise, surprise, on Henry's vlog, we've got flat light. But it shouldn't really affect what I'm going to try and explain to you. I wanted to talk about the sort of main reason why I've decided to get a telephoto lens, zoom lens. And it's basically because I really feel that my photography has become a little bit predictable. So if I look through my portfolio, you know, I, I feel really comfortable with my ability and using my wide angle lens and stuff like that. But yeah, it's become a little bit predictable and samey. And, and thus it's become a little bit boring for me, you know, to go out sometimes um, and take photographs. So I basically bought it to try and mix things up a bit and to challenge myself and try and push myself outside my comfort zones and stuff like that. And, you know, try and get some maybe abstract shots. I've got this little example that I've come up with, with right? Say you, you planned a trip to the Lake District, all right? And you go up there and the weather was incredible. You get three photographs that you're so happy with. You get back home, you edit them, delighted with them. Chances are you get back and all three of them photographs have got a photograph of a lake in it, all right? 
Now, I'm not saying that's a problem, of course, that's why you go to the Lake District for the beautiful scenery and for the lakes, let's, let's face it. But all I'm saying is I'd love, to, personally, I'd love to be able to come back with two images of lakes that I'm really happy with and just one completely mad abstract image that, you know, the audience, whoever's looking at the image, you won't even know it was in the Lake District. It could be anywhere in the world, you know. So that's probably the main reason why I've gone for this lens just to mix things up a little bit. And I really, I'm excited to like simplify my compositions a little bit as well. So especially in this sort of, this sort of place, you know, where you're looking down um, on the landscape and it's so vast. And I think I mentioned it last week where, you know, I put my wide angle away in my bag, 10 meters away behind me because I just didn't want to use it. I didn't want to capture the whole scene. And this is going to allow me to zoom in and crop my compositions. And, you know, imagine waking up in the morning, there's a beautiful cloud inversion. It's probably not going to happen because it's, it's one of my vlogs. The weather's probably going to be crap. But yeah, and there's like a beautiful cloud inversion. There's just a, a tree sort of poking out the top and we're in the golden hour and there's a beautiful long shadow casted on top of the clouds from the tree. Something like that and just zooming in and you wouldn't have a clue I was in the Peak District or on Kinder Scout or anything. I think that would be amazing. Just to mix things up a little bit. So we'll, we'll see how that pans out over the next few weeks, few months, whatever. But anyway, I've got a little bit of an image in mind. So I'm going to get myself set up now and try and talk you through it. Right, you may be able to see behind me. There's one small little cloud there through the low cloud right in the back and it's caught a little bit of the sunset and 360 degrees around all the way. No word of a lie, that's the only little patch that's caught colour. So, I mean, that's a massive improvement on Snowdonia what we had. So, you know, that's good. That's an improvement. Things are going well. This is good. Right, composition. Um, like I said, the light is terrible. Did I mention that? The light's terrible. I don't think I said that. So, so I'm trying to work with something else. I'm trying to work with colour contrasts and lines in the landscape and also probably textures as well in this comp. So if you look here, I'm trying to shoot down the valley and we've got these, these nice colour contrasts between the, I suppose it's different shades of greens. It's like, maybe it's like greens and then browns and then maybe yellows as well. Um, which are really helping to add a little bit of colour contrast, like I said. And then we've got these sort of zigzags as the land sort of crisscrosses over itself, which is really nice. I'm hoping the viewer's eye will lead along this zigzag and then right up to the top left where we've got a few trees there as well. But like I mentioned before, I'm trying to go for the sort of simplicity sort of shot. I suppose this is a little bit abstract. Probably not really, but um, I mean, to be honest, I'm willing to admit I'm definitely clutching at straws a little bit here because yeah it's not the best really is it but this is all right this is not a bad composition and i'm doing what i want to do up here with my new telephoto lens so that's the main thing guys anyway this is also going to be a real challenge to get because it's quite windy so if you look here if i zoom in on a random patch of the landscape there that's me not touching the camera oh look it's shaking loads and we've got quite a big breeze there it's all over the place so i'm gonna to have to sit here uh, and just wait till there's a little bit of a little bit of give in the wind and just quickly try and get the, the shot with my remote shutter f4.8 i'm shooting at to try and get the fastest shutter speed possible iso 100 it's giving me one one sixth of a second if i was shooting at f10 that was a two second exposure so i mean that's still a fairly long shutter speed so i might have to increase my iso a little bit um so i can get a real fast shutter speed because of this wind but we'll see either way i'll chill out here for a while and just Enjoy the views, it's nice at least. Ah, here's that image guys. Oh, we're home. Oh, we're back to the tent. This is a much better setup than what I had in Snowdonia. For anyone who didn't see that vlog, um, which is up here in the corner, <laughs> uh, I was on a slant like that on my tent and it was just terrible i think i slept for about an hour so hopefully a bit better this evening 
Um, I've got a really bad feeling about the image that I just took. I think it might have been crap. I mean, completely honest. It definitely wasn't completely sharp because it was very windy out there. My tripod's not the best. And yeah, if anyone liked that image, please tell me in the comments and tell me why you like it. Because, uh, like I say, I'm not feeling good about that one. Or if you don't, if you didn't like it, please tell me as well. Anyway. Um, I hope you got the message. Anyway, that was the main things. I knew I wasn't going to get a good picture this evening because of the cloud cover. I hope you got the message about why, you know, I wanted to start using a telephoto lens a little bit more. Next week I'm going to tell you is about the sort of second reason why I've got a telephoto lens. Um, so that's, that's the worst cliffhanger for any video, any vlog ever. Tune in next week to get the second reason to why I bought a zoom lens. <laughs> uh, Anyway, hopefully that'll convince a couple of you. But thank you so much for watching and sharing the adventure. Apologies for the rubbish photography, but hope you got something from the from the vlog as always. And thanks again. Hopefully see you next week. Out.